Super Metal Pets. The Archives. Me and you is season two. All right, let's kick it. Hello and welcome to the interview section of Canberra Metalhead. You got Mikey Malpas and JDK. Join here with the guys from Morris King. So uh, today at the basement, we're recording with Ted Ricks, guitar and vocals. Mark Allen, uh, rhythm guitarist and vocals. Uh, hey guys, I'm Kane Love, and I'm the new vocalist. Excellent. All right, all right, guys. It's good to catch up. We're uh, recording this episode at the basement, which is a cool little spot to catch up, and you know go through, uh, have, a, have a bit of chat and learn a little bit more about the bands. Uh, we usually um, usually have the studio ones, but these ones here are nice atmospheric episodes. So Good food too. And good yeah, food. Free always, chips. Yeah, always, always good to have a have a feed while we're chatting. Um, Chompies is delicious. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. You guys just watch me smash out a deconstructed burger and... Mate, that looked insane. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I'm glad you told me it was deconstructed. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> like Barry Monday with the yeah. like cheese slice on it. Like. Yeah, man, it was just like it's basically just a burger without the bun. Yeah, yeah. well, look so good. I'll definitely meal. get one next time. Yeah, definitely, man. No, they're rad. They, they, they do some good stuff. Um, so speaking of good, doing good stuff, you guys, um, you know, been playing a couple gigs lately, and that's managed to catch you at um, at your last one here. Uh, that's kind of sparked the interview here. You, you guys have um, Heath in the band, which I know from previous projects. Uh, he's not here today, but like he's the connection that I have with you guys initially. Yep. Um, so how's it been sort of doing some doing some gigs and stuff? Obviously, you mentioned you're the new vocalist, um, you know, try, yeah. trying out the crowds. What's it like going around and playing some gigs? Man, it's a lot of fun. So I went um, almost two years to the date between playing gigs between this band and my old band. So it was, yeah, it was pretty nervous getting back on stage, but yep. it was awesome. It was awesome. And so we've got a gig coming up in about a week in Tumut. Um, that's our second gig as in our current lineup. Yep. Um, so we're not doing a lot. We're just sort of starting things slowly. Yeah. Um, but eventually we'll build it up and play a lot more regularly. Yeah, rad. Mm. That, that's good to hear. The um, I, was say, I was saying before off mic, like there's a pretty big following uh, for you guys just in the local scene so it's good to hear that you're like branching out a little bit and doing some interstate gigs as well building that following yeah. um, around the place uh, do you guys what, how do you guys uh, find the travel with getting around yeah well, Tumut is a hometown for a few of us so oh really yeah yeah cool moved yeah. up here years ago and reached out to a few mates back there that are in bands and yep put together a show at one of the local pubs the commercial hotel oh cool which is, it's a new thing for Tumor, original metal. Normally you get your, your typical 80s, 90s cover bands in Tumor, so it yeah. should be an interesting night. Oh, cool, man. Playing some originals for everybody. Yeah, original metal. Um, Hopefully it goes down well. Yeah, that's good, man. No, we I have no idea what to expect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get into it. I'll, I'll get run out of town. Yeah. I would expect them to have a great time, man. Yeah. Um, most, most regional shows like that, um, they don't get much. And when they do, they go off. Yeah, so yeah that's what I'm I would, for. Yeah, that's I would, I would yeah. expect it to go off like a rocket. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's what I think. Fingers crossed. Should be a good night. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. You might even see people like, you know, if you guys um, got a couple of of members from Germit, you know, people that you haven't seen for a while coming out, and the first time they see you is playing a gig, so that could be cool. Should be good. Yeah, we don't get back as often as you'd like to, so yeah, be a reunion as well as a gig and. No That's doubt. good, man. Excessive amounts of alcohol shall be consumed. Ted's going to invite his old music teacher, so it's a real yeah. reunion, like yeah. high school reunion. Yeah, that yeah, like, should be good. Legit, man. Like, um, the music teachers are so broad with their like um, their their sort of um, curriculum. People that they taught the same song to, two people, one of them could be like now like a, like in a reggae band versus like a yeah. metal band. Yeah. So it's cool. I guess it'd be cool for him or, or her to see, you know, what it's like now to see where, the, where it's gone. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had a music teacher when I was in, in high school, like just absolute machine when it came to keyboard and piano. Oh, man. That dude, so in his, on the weekends, he would get paid from the pub they'd pay him to um, sit there and play the piano. This guy, like, 
just picture you ever watch uh, House with Hugh Laurie? Yeah. yeah. Legit look like House, man. <laughs> and um, like he would just he would like play with one hand and then eat like a counter meal with the other <laughs> and just keep it keep it in tune. Like he'd be playing, he'd order a meal, he'd sit down and start playing and the waitress would bring it out and say, like, Do you want me to just leave this here? And he's like, No, just sit it on the edge there and he'd just keep eating while he was playing. Just insane. So like it's cool. Like music teachers are just sometimes like hidden gems. Like yeah. you get like dudes that could just shred on guitar and they're just you know teaching music in in a high school because that's like i mean in the scheme of things there's a like in the music industry that's probably like one of the more stable jobs you could get from being good at it stable wage yeah yeah Yeah. and uh kids are always usually pretty happy to play music so then you don't usually have you know not as much trouble as the math teachers i guess yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly no it's good uh good to Good to uh, build the crowd and get get out of town. That's it. But um, yeah, it's also cool to, you know, just play gigs in general. I guess, especially sure, yeah. now you know you you tend to mesh more on stage. You got I guess like, I've uh, talked to bands in the past, and there's this going thing where it's like we can practice as much as we want. It's not until you get on the stage that you just like get that extra layer of practice, like yeah. with the crowd and things like that. Once the adrenaline kicks in feedback from the crowd yeah. yeah well there's nothing like it right you get on that stage yeah. and there's people watching and there's crowd screaming and you just blast it out as yeah. loud as you fucking can yeah you know there's nothing like it man eh? yeah it's like it's like a drug or yeah you're possessed yeah. or something like that yeah you know what I mean? like, exactly man it's like um yeah it's like for example like i'll play in this show um uh earlier in the track listing um there's a hadal mall song and th- those guys uh played here uh this year and um, the singers got some like really crazy. Uh, they they played with uh, Black Dahlia Murder when they when oh, they yeah. played that gig, um, and the singers got this like really possessed like kind of stage presence, and it's just super crazy, man. Like it's just, it's just it's nearly like it's a different person. I've had that as well. Like oh, like for example, as I destruct, coincidentally also in the top track listing. Um, <coughs> The, the dude, like, we interviewed him for the show. He's just super, like, you know, chilled. Oh, man, you know, um, just cool cool to have a good gig and all that stuff. And then gets on stage and just hypes up, like, yeah, as in yeah. just ready to rock. So I, I'm assuming it's much much the same. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's like you get on stage and you just get in the moment, right? Yeah. Like, so I'll, I'll go out and I'm, I'm a, a terrible dancer. Yeah. I'm dancing. <laughs> I'm dancing, just, you know, I'll get cold chills. I hate it. Can't do it. To the point where it's like it's socially isolated me in situations, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm like the dude sitting in the corner drinking a beer, going, "Yeah, this is great." Yeah. But, but then you get on stage and you do it in front of a group of people and you're playing your own stuff and you think that's that'd be sort of like would make you sort of shy or embarrassed, but you just get out there and go, "We're up now." It's yep. on. Yeah, yeah, you just go ballistic. Yeah. You just catch yourself doing dumb shit. Like. Yeah. <laughs> you start doing this dumb sway move and you're like. I guess I'm doing this now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, I see it a lot, like different stage styles. It's often, it's funny, like, because I, I don't play in a band. I, I play bass, but I'm not, like, you know, in a band or, you know, all good. But um, it's funny how I blame not being in a band. It's like legit, I'm not in a band because I'm not good. Like, it's not like I'm not good at bass because I'm not in a band. It's, I'm not in a band because I'm not good at bass you know what I mean like, it's the other way around mm. you guys are just don't tr- sell yourself short yeah you guys are just like don't sell yourself yeah. short um, anyway so you stop us <laughs> every man's a musician yeah every like terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, yeah it's one of those things where it's like um, I've had a bass for a while you know practice and all that stuff but um, I often think to myself when I see bands if I was playing on the stage, because I like to put myself in that situation, like, and I do it sometimes when I'm listening to music, I'll be like, you know, where would I fit on that stage if I was in that band sort of thing, you know, it's just like weird, weird, um, like possessive personality of mine. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I, I'm like, what would I be like on stage? What's your like style? It's funny how like you see people that like they're the low rider with the bass you know yeah. or they're like the high high strung with like the yes. have you seen like the tech death bands yeah. that are just yeah. like crazy and they're just staring at the fretboard yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's like um the guys from um we had um 
We had the guys from Archbuyer on the show. Yes. Mm. And uh, just at that speed, you can't really mess around with a low-strung bass. Like, it needs yeah. to be comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, like, yeah, so you got <laughs> Fieldy from Corn yeah. with the, like, the <laughs> su- <laughs> super low, um, low bass. And, um, yeah, just cranking it out loud. It all comes back to the playing style as well. Like, yeah. So many guitarists, bassists, drummers just have different styles. And mm. Yeah. That's where you feel comfortable. Yeah. What do you reckon is you guys' uh, biggest influence? Oh, shit. Um, I already swear, swear a couple times. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anything like... There's a fair age difference in the in the band, so like, there's a lot of old school. Your Panteras, Machine Heads, Fruity, your Parkway Drives, your Mastodons, like... Tool, Cog. Yeah. We, we take from a lot of... I want to say like Led Zeppelin got me into music. Yeah. Van Halen made me pick up a guitar, and then pr- pretty general, but Metallica made me like metal. And that's just yeah, that's nice. good, man. It's progressive. It's uh, it's good to see that to hear that progression. Like, yeah. what about um? Did you ever have any influence from like your parents at all? Like, did you did they ever have any music that you were just kind of like oh like I know for a f- like for a fact my old man used to listen to Black Sabbath. Yeah. And yeah. my brother and I used to go through his vinyl collection and just look at the front covers because he didn't have a vinyl player. And we used to just look at them <laughs> and just go, I wonder what this sounds like because yeah. the pitch is cool. Yeah. You know? Kind of, actually. Like, my mum always had, like, Def Leppard, Van Halen, yeah. um, Queen. Like, and then my grandfather was always sort of into, like, Johnny Cash and that. Like, yeah, cool. And yeah, you sort of get into those guys and you're like, become pretty musical orientated yeah and then, yeah and then like I said I found Led Zeppelin and then progressed from there but I would say yeah parents definitely had some sort of an influence yeah and, and then, oh sorry oh no I was just going to say like even if you, they don't influence you one of the best things they can do is allow you to like branch yeah. out a lot of the yeah. time you hear people saying like you know their parents weren't supportive of their music choices or anything like that so it always helps to at least if they don't influence allow you to branch out yeah yeah I think I remember the first vinyls I found in mum's collection was Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon and it just snowballed from there being a teenager in the 90s it's big on grunge Nirvana Pearl Jam and whatnot. And the parents supporting like we lived out on a small farm and the neighbours were relatively close but we had a garage that we had band practicing just about every afternoon and poor neighbours put up with it and <laughs> I guess I've never heard of any complaints so yep. I, think I remember when they moved out dad saying that he owed them big time so they put up with a lot of crap from us <laughs> yeah. without that I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now oh, that's cool man it's good to hear it also it, it does help to have a good rehearsal area yeah. I mean now um, technology's taken over a lot with people like practicing we're talking to uh, the guys um, from here in the last show and they were just saying um, and also uh, in one of our early shows I'm um, Callum from Honest Crooks if you know those guys yeah. um, and they were saying that a lot of the time they just do rehearsals with um, you know Facebook video to just like like with the two guitarists just getting like a riff down pat yeah. Yeah, things right. like that so it's cool to hear that like although there might not be as many open commercial rehearsal areas technology is kind of filling that void a little bit too yeah absolutely yeah it allows bands to all, almost come together you know you're not just looking for people in your own town anymore right yeah you can do it from towns across yeah. the border or whatever you know you hear about America and there's guys there's five band members and three of them are in a different state yeah and they'll do a physical crack once a month but they'll do Facebook video or Skype for that three weeks in between. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, we hear um, <laughs> stories of like, you know, um, like hired guns and things like that. People that are just looking for an extra member of their band that might be just, you know, have YouTube samples and stuff. And they're like, yeah, that dude, like, let's bring him along and try it out. Yeah. Um, I tried to do session work for a long time, man. Yeah. yeah. It's a great, great thing to have. Yeah. Good repertoire. You know, a whole bunch of different people in yeah. d- different tunes be able to learn stuff quick yeah, rad man yeah no, that, see uh, like I said some of the info that I fall short on not being in a band Jay's got all that as well so <laughs> you know it's uh, there's a good dynamic to have because I just 
you know, not not playing with with a band. There's certain things that I don't like experience. So um, yeah, I'm kind of the odd one out, I guess. <laughs> But uh, in a good way, in a good way. Oh man, look, I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm always just, I'm just always the talker. Like I do comedy, and then yeah. I, I do this as well. I think that, um, look, I love, I love playing bass, but I feel like if I was on the stage playing bass, I would just always want to be the singer. Like I just would, like every time. Yeah, there is. Yeah, that, that you, is a thing. You, you ever, that. you ever seen the band that's like got the mic stand in front of the like the other guitarists or the the bassist or whatever, and um, I'd be the bassist that has to like go up and say some crap into the mic that's like for the guitarist and just piss <laughs> everyone in the band off. Yeah. I'd be the reason that at the end of the gig they say to me like, dude, like. Well, like we appreciate you helping out <laughs> <laughs> but hey man you create yeah. a show right because yeah. it's not just about the music it's about the experience right yep. and you've got to create something that people can enjoy and something can remember yep. and you know you find a lot of people that go to a, a music fest or a concert regardless of the genre and regardless of the, the artist and I go oh look they're really good Yeah, but they sort of just stood there Yeah, the music mm-hmm. sounded great but no you, shit you're there because they just stood there you yeah. know what I mean and look it doesn't work for everyone different types of music yeah, and yeah. stuff like that you're not going to see Pavarotti headbanging and jumping around there. you know what I mean but I'll tell you would pay for it I'd still pay for it, pay pay for for it. <laughs> but I know like would I know what I get to take yeah. <laughs> like it's just like you, that whole stage you use the whole square footage you're running around you're jumping you're jumping yep. in the crowd you're spitting water everywhere you know it's, and people are like oh that's cool like some people are not into it but, yeah you know but and I feel way, like those people would shit, be into it. We could hide it a little bit by, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> by the show we put on, you know what I mean? Like, oh, they sounded yeah. crap, but hey, you know, they got into it. We'll yeah. give them a good participation yeah. trophy, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Perfect. Hey, man, Sid Vicious never play, could play a note. He was one of the biggest <laughs> bass players ever known. <laughs> there we go. I've still got hope yet. Um, there is definitely hope. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't play, but he beat the shit out of himself. That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to plug his guitar in. <laughs> now I've seen some pretty cool um, stage pickups before. Like you're saying, in the heat of the moment, sometimes things you just think of random stuff, or you you know um, something might happen. You got to do a quick fix on a bit of gear, like on stage. Um, like for example, when we're talking about um, as I destruct before, like that singer being so crazy, man. Like. I, I seen him with uh, you. You heard of the guys, a local band called Clarity of Chaos. They've played a few yeah, bands yeah, or yeah, gigs yeah. around, and um, I know the the singer. Uh, sorry, the um, the guitarist in, in Clarity was up the front, like filming the the As I Destruct gig, and um, vocalist comes up and just wrapped his head with the mic cord and just kept singing like while he's just like the dude in the front row has just got the mic cord wrapped around his face and um yeah the best thing the dude that could do was just that was filming he um just turned the camera around and just filmed the guy behind him singing with him with the mic uh, cord just wrapped around his face like that so that, that was like it's just i guess it's just one of those random things he's just like you know what I don't just want to sing this song. I want to wrap the cord around that big guy's face in the front there. Yeah. <laughs> he, will, he will remember that show. I yeah. guarantee he'll remember that show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Actually, um, in the last giveaway for the As I Destruct thing, there was a DVD of that show. So it's actually recorded. They set up a GoPro on the sound desk. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I saw that giveaway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, did Heath win that? Yeah, Heath yeah. won that. <laughs> so actually, oh, yeah. if you boys want to see that footage, hit yeah, up Heath. He's got the him. DVD. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, that, that's good. But like I was saying before, man, like you you randomly think of things, but also you have like random things on stage where you're like, oh man, like you know that thing's failed. I've got to fix it up. Like I seen a dude on the backstage, and it was one of the one of the supports for a hardcore gig that was out there. Dude um, jumps down just before the solo, and um, broke the cord off in his guitar. So he like oh, so stuck in there. No, so the the cable came out the back of the plug, so it was just the plug sitting there. It looked like a wireless plug, but it wasn't wireless. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, yeah. Um, so he just ripped that bit out of it. 
jumped down, grabbed like the short cord, you know, like the 30 centimeter <laughs> yeah, one, yeah, yeah. straight out of the side of the pedal, jammed it in the guitar and did the solo down like on the ground. Oh, that's <laughs> <cheap. laughs> through the patch cable. Yeah, yeah. through yeah. the patch cable. Missing <laughs> <laughs> So, is this, do you have any like sort of random stage story where you've had like a piece of equipment malfunction that you've had to make do? Early on, when I was drumming, when, yeah. when we started the band, yeah. I was drumming and halfway through one of our double kick heavy songs, I had one of the beaters come out on my, my kick pedal and the right pedal at that, the dominant pedal. So luckily it was coming up to a bridge. Yep. So we just dragged that bridge out a bit while I went all techie on the pedal and finished and the song. Yeah. Like, hardly anyone noticed. Wasn't there a time that the same thing happened during the, a break? Like we just finished a song and you had to fix it and I started playing the first note looked at go oh, Ted's not ready and then I had to turn to the crowd fucking Ted like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I tried to put yeah I tried to hackle Ted and then everyone just started hackling me so <laughs> that fired real quick but yeah, but yeah uh, and that's what I think that one was a cymbal stand getting loose yeah the yep. joys of the back one and then I think Heath has had the same issue since he started with us with the double kick pedals so yeah Gear it's maintenance it, is high on our in our list now. It seems like yeah. a curse. Like you've got the yeah. you got the, the pedal curse. You try to prepare for everything that can go wrong, but yep. then something just finds its way. Well, like for example, the the last gig that was here with um, the guys from Hostel. If you know yeah, those yeah, dudes, well, uh, I watched the drummer just split his, one one of his hi hats in in like a section came out of it and hit the guitarist in the <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> Like just while he was smashing away at it, and have you ever seen those dudes play and just yeah, that that hard. they're just smashing yeah. it, yeah. and just even the facial expression as well, just like smashing it out, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, just it kind of like you could hear the tone change, <laughs> and once that heavy part of the the song ends, you just see him look over and just spin it, and uh, there's just a whole whole gap missing out of the top of it. <laughs> so uh, that was pretty cool. But uh, I, I guess, like, it just comes with wear and tear, especially in the metal scene. Like, everything you're doing is amped up. Like, you're not yeah. just playing, like, you know, a rhythm or, like, just a just a beat. Like, you're doing solos and, like, hitting it hard, you know. Well, drums are a destructive instrument, man. It, they, every piece is, um, you know, breaking down, and that's what gives you that those different sounds. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, a, a, a percussive thing is like destroying and that's yeah. why you're getting that beautiful sound out of that piece yeah. so like you can you can belt a cymbal all day <coughs> you hit it on the wrong angle and it's gonna chunk big chunks out of it <laughs> right but you know sometimes it makes it better yeah like I, i've had a few sets of uh, i don't know if anyone's ever used wuhan you know how crappy they are <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you just chump a big chunk out of it and they just Sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, having an effect symbol now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sell Wuhan uh, stuff pre-chunked. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're cheap enough. You just yeah, hit it with a hammer and, you know, you don't yeah. care. It's a $10 symbol. Release an album called Hammer Smashed Wuhan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a band name. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. You smash it. Fuck yeah. Um... So I don't think we've talked much about um, your recording or, or your new single. Um, how long have you guys been working on that for? It's been coming together for a, a while now. Life sort of got in the way for a bit there, but we finally got it finished off. Um, May, I think. The working title was May, and that's yeah. what you sent through. Like the song was the written in May. May. Yeah. 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 I did the lyrics for it in June, and then yeah, yeah. just been sort of fine-tuning it from there. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, we're having that a spin on that with this show and we'll be bringing some more content from that in the next couple of weeks and then hopefully on the next couple of months we'll have another single out we've got another one ready yep, yep. we just gotta fine tune it yeah put the touch s- it special polish. sauce in that yeah yeah also with the new lineup you're always gonna wanna try and produce it and make you know new improvements to your sound and yeah. that kind of thing so that's that's awesome to hear that you guys are, are gonna kind of market it in that that way where you kind of doing a slow leak and yeah you know yeah we want to make the most of all the hard work that we put into it 
I think with lessons learned from Yuri Mare.